Welcome to the Nate Joe Chuan Podcast. My name is Isaac Kamins. This is a bi-weekly podcast where my friend Jess O'Brien and I discuss internal martial arts, qigong, and meditation. Uh, this week we continue our discussion of uh, Chen Wei Ming's seminal work, Tai Chi Da Wen, uh, where we discuss uh, what he says about push hands. Um, in the extended episode, we go into much greater detail on Da Lu as well as a bit more about the fighting aspects of Tai Chi. Uh, then in the Patreon episode this week, we are going to continue our discussion of Wang Mu and the Taoist internal alchemy, and also return to looking at Bruce's article on Taoist meditation uh, and discuss the sense of Jing and essence. So check that out. Hope you enjoy the episode. Thanks for listening and be well. In today's episode, we're going to continue our look at Chen Wei Ming, the famous young style master of Tai Chi Chen. His book, Tai Chi Cha Wen, is a series of questions and answers between him and his students. So we started looking at the first chapter last time. He speaks in the voice of his teacher, Yang Cheng Fu. So he tried, he says, you know, I memorized everything from my teacher. And so I'm, I'm repeating it as if I was him and kind of giving you what, what I heard. So one of the big topics in this young style Tai Chi is push hands. His teacher was really the guy who made push hands a central piece of the Tai Chi training as opposed to an auxiliary piece of the Tai Chi training, right? That's true. That's really mm -hmm. important. So I think, you know, part of what he was um, putting out there was the the virtues of of pushing hands as a training method not just a competition thing you know right i think you hit a killer point there because like young style they they chose to make push hands the main way to do all their two-person activities they created that as their format so you can the application sort of came underneath tai chi so you use push hands and then you do the applications inside push hands at a certain point you know so that would be the way you'd apply brush knee or you know all the different movements you might use. Whereas before it was more like free fighting, I think like any yeah. other regular martial arts school, you just beat each other up, but then they yeah. took push hands and made it central. I think that's a huge part of why Tai Chi is so popular. Yeah. I mean, it, I think it's, it's very similar to judo, right? In that sense that it, in that sense. Yeah. What it's doing is it's giving you a, in, in really big quotation marks safe way of practicing the techniques yeah out the um danger of getting punched in the eyeball you know like yeah. basically that, that that it takes away the you know the the striking aspect of the art yeah and really gets you into the the sensitivity and the body control stuff yeah the balance the shifting, yeah. the ability to, you know, be so agile. It's a great vessel for lots of different practices. Yeah. Basically. You can plug lots of stuff into that yeah. format. Like like Wing Chun Chi Sao is similar. You exchange the same series of hand, you know, you get your hands together. But the problem with that is you get punched in the face right away. And like, which is great if you want to do martial arts, but it doesn't it lend itself to becoming this huge, popular, multi-million, you know, industry. Like, yeah, it's always going to be a little smaller because if you get an elbow to the side of your head. Same, you same know, with you Rosho, come... right? Like with Bagua. Right, Bagua's got Bagua and Shingy do Rosho. It's Rocho, always so. less, you know, um, people are always more interested in push hands than Rosho. Right. So it's like... I don't know. It's just, you know, the lesser known thing. Right. It's just more easy to approach. It's more comfortable. You don't have to be yeah. worried that someone's going to take a cheap shot and mess you up. And you're just trying to learn something. And they, you know, yeah, it happens it, in all martial arts where you, you, you're trying to be all mellow and the other person's either nervous or new, or, and they do something harsh on you. Like Tai Chi push hands eliminates that pretty much. Well, and it, and it forces you in a sense to use Tai Chi principles rather mm. than, just kind of you know some other technique right, right. like because if if you're fighting you know if you're doing it as a sparring thing right um you could do things that look like tai chi but that aren't done in the tai chi way essentially right 
The um, rules of push hands force you to use more Tai Chi right, yielding right. principles. Because you can't just it, shift forward and stop. You have to go back again. Yeah. You can't just lunge forward with everything you have and knock it right. down, you know, and right. drop it to the floor and start pounding on it. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, every time you lunge, you have to shift back just as much. So in that way, it's self-regulating. So it's kind—it's of, pretty genius. It's a great way to get the average Joe into what's interesting about disbalancing each other and finding your center and pressurizing your own negong. When someone's pushing on you, are you still linked? Are you still unified? Did you Are you the one at yeah, that point I mean, still? Or again, were you like, just sort of pretending? You can do it on so many layers. I mean, it can go all the way to like, uh, a two-person meditation practice essentially sure. you know where you're both where strictly you're, energetic you're helping each other dissolve emotional yeah. blockages i mean <laughs> there's there's yeah it's just it's it's again the the a lot of this stuff it's like you know the container isn't so much the 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 thing it's what you're doing with the container right it's so, a great container um, and every school has their own little specialties and quirks that their teachers liked or the moves that worked for them that they preserved that right sometimes, I mean, like i was in schools that had some odd weird old exercises that didn't make that much sense but they were preserved from some reason at some time so it's fun to figure those out and like why yeah, and like this way you know or most like external schools you'll have some sort of routine of arm banging exercises you know, where it's like you bang forearm. It's cooperative. Yeah. yeah. But it, and it's usually a pattern. And that's essentially the, 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 the principle is you have to do something in a set pattern mm -hmm. um, that sort of slowly moves you to doing more spontaneous things. Yeah. So that you, you keep, you know, you, you can do the principles, right? Because when you freak out, you can't do the principles anymore, right? At, at least in the beginning. So you have to start with, okay, let's do this in a way where there's no, there's nothing scary, right? All you're dealing with is, you know, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. Right. You know, and it it's gets like, a safe space to start. I mean, a lot of people have never pushed anybody or ever tried to push somebody or ever yeah. tried to defend themselves from a push. So it's like, you got to start at the, just the raw beginning and that's what's so great about it, because you could start a Tai Chi class and have a blast doing push hands. Well, and it brings, so what, What I mean, this is getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but what it brings up when somebody pushes on you, right? The, the, there's two things that, that come up right away. One is human contact. Mm. And that's probably the biggest one that nobody really talks about, is most people freak the fuck out when somebody just touches them. Right. Like on any in any context, if a strange, it's an awfully put, personal thing to do, yeah. if a stranger puts their hands on you, you tense up. Right? right. Like that's just what most people do. And what push hands teaches you is a stranger puts their hands on you and you puff, you know, you do your pong. Right. You don't you don't tense up. You you fill up. Right. And you get this thing of like, I don't care who puts their hands on me. Like I, I it does, I'm not afraid of you. You're afraid of me. You know, <laughs> the thing of that, if somebody's going to push me, right. My response is not going to be to withdraw or mm. to, to clench when that happens. It's going to be to sink and to relax and to and kind of meet their force. You don't go yeah. too far or I mean, too little. You, you meet them where they're at. It's, you know, it's everything we've been talking about in this whole, you know, this whole season. But yeah, I mean, you, you apply a Tai Chi principle. Let's put it that way. Right. Right. That takes work. But that's what that's the first thing. And then the second thing is falling over. Right. The, the fear that comes from when you start to lose your balance, the way your body stiffens up to kind of pull you back the other way to learn how when you hit that point of no return or just before you hit the point of no return, you try and relax. You try and let go so that at least when you get pushed, you're, you're the drunk in a car accident, um, you know, who just rolls around and is just is fine because he's so relaxed, not the guy who stiffens mm -hmm. up and gets both of his arms. Right. Broken, right. And, and that kind of, um, you know, that just that reflexive thing of your body wants to stiffen up and you have to be able to use your intent to say, nope, relax. And, and that's kind of the, 
it's very hard at that point. You know, it's easy to do that when you're well, easier when you do that when you're in a safe position. But when you start to be in that back leg, you know, turn to the turned away from your weighted leg in this sort of awkward position, things start to come up inside of you. And then that gets to the next piece of push hands, which is what is that stuff that's coming up inside of you? Because that's all this emotional fear and trauma stuff that you can then start to use to do the the aforementioned meditation type stuff. So it can go real far, you know, as a practice, but Anyways, like I said, they're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> right. That freestyle push hands format just allows for so much possibility. Yeah. So Chen Wei Ming's first thing here says, the question is, should a novice use force in push hands? Which I assume is Lee. Lee, the uh, clumsy force. No, the song of push hands says, be conscientious and ward off, roll back, press and push. These should be clearly differentiated. Um. So he says, you know, You've got to practice several thousand times a day and your leg will naturally take root while your waist becomes flexible. After a year, then you may try to locate the opponent's energy. It then becomes free push hands and you can push as you wish. But if you rush it, you will use force and then force becomes habit. If you do that, you will be unable to attain a high level. So it kind of that's the invest and loss philosophy that comes up in Tai Chi quite often of let that yeah, let your yeah. first year you just try to get precise about your movements then worry yeah. about pushing people well and i think what he's saying is that for the first year you have to use the pattern right you have to do a specific you know you push me right. I turn i push you you turn you know kind of thing i do that pump, makes sense yeah on, i do g you do lu right be, because Very civilized just, pattern yeah. yeah yeah and then after a year you can kind of get more into the the freestyle you know thing but but that you need to go through a, a period of time where really what you're doing is trying to figure out what the principles are not the not, yeah. not you win you know yeah yeah you've got to have very strict rules of, i mean that's that's work that's how it worked for me i felt like i had to get that pattern down and feel safe and like okay everyone's on the same page then as time went on you start to yeah it's like tennis you know <clears throat> or like um table tennis or something right the idea that you know first thing you want to learn is just how to go bang 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 but back and forth with someone right to just get to a rally yeah yeah to get it you know get it going because other if you can't do that it's you know it's not gonna be much fun you know right you just <laughs> swing as hard as you can on your serve and that's yeah, it yeah. like that just it's about you know so it teaches you control and all these other things okay so uh he says, the four movements of ward off, roll back, press, and push have limitless change. For instance, you may push light and agile or heavy and solid, left heavy or and right light or vice versa, or the hands converging or diverging in a push. You may press straight ahead or diagonally, adding an elbow or changing your hands or arm, or you may adjust the point of the press on your arm. If the center of the point is changed, then use another point. Each point is one and at the same time a curved and straight line. Thus, you use sticking energy at each and every point, and then you discharge your energy, seeking the straight from the curve. So he just goes through exploring, you know, just listing. Yeah. You may press up or down, da da da, up, left or right, and if he finds your center, change change direction quickly, but don't disconnect. If your opponent disconnects, quickly push him out. This is called meet disconnect push. Use rollback up or down or horizontally with a snapping energy to break his arm. So there's some great suggestions, right? So he's yeah, he's giving you some like practical uh, techniques. But one of the, one of the things I that struck me was, you know, he mentions the song of the the push hands, uh -huh. which I think is one of those pieces that might be unique to the you know Yang style Tai Chi class. Bai Hua doesn't include it in his book, exactly. So the, the there's something about different schools include it different some schools don't i don't know maybe yang cheng is. fu maybe it, it seems to be associated with yang cheng fu you know i don't know if that young family for sure but maybe yang cheng fu again that would make sense since he was the one who pushed push hands to the front kind of right i mean but it could have been added who knows i mean it could be old it could be new but yeah. he definitely focused on it so it seems like it's associated with the yang cheng fu right. group I just thought that was interesting. That that yeah, I mean, Baiwa doesn't include it, and he considers himself to be in the old Yang group, so I don't know if that says anything or not. 
But uh, it, does mm-hmm. he? Ta- he doesn't really talk about push hands a whole lot in the. He's I got that. There's one. Oh no, you're right. Yeah, he teaches the pattern. There's one section where he goes through the pattern, but there isn't the like. He doesn't bring it up a lot. Yeah. Well, and that could be a a difference between you know quote unquote push hand schools versus quote unquote martial schools, right? right. It's, is your emphasis on the more core principles, just as general things, or right. really getting specific about doing push hands? You know, right? And yeah, and they that again that may relate to the Yang Ban Ho versus Yang Jian Ho. That's what, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether you necessarily learn from one or the other, you follow one school or the other's approach. It doesn't mean you necessarily learn from the guy. It could just mean maybe that you take their more. Their, you use their application uh, yeah. to push hand as your focus. I mean, one way to think of it might be just you use their book, you know, like th- that there's um it's like different gospels tell yeah. the, <laughs> tell the same story slightly differently. Right. Know? So it's yeah. like one version might be telling it where push hands is the real important yeah, yeah. Thing, and another version is telling it where yeah, push hands is important, but there's also this fighting thing. Right. And one might just be, no, there's just fighting. And right. you can pick which one you want. That's that young, yeah. young Bian Ho's so, whistling yeah. throats approach. Yeah, right. So the next question is said that one must not use clumsy force in push hands. But if my opponent is strong and uses great force against me, what am I supposed to do? So Chen Wei Ming says, if you can forego force and practice push hands for several years, you will produce a natural energy, Peng Jing which will stop an opponent's force without strain. If a beginner practices relaxation for several years with no tension anywhere or practices push hands with ward off, he can get this energy. But beyond that, you must still learn to turn your waist. Yeah. So he's so saying, Peng Jing is that filling up you were talking about yeah, earlier. You, you eventually learn how to relax into force and then you learn how to like move it with your waist right, with your waist there you go so those are two components that you've got to kind of cultivate all right let's finish this one right here does the stronger person always prevail in push hands the answer the situation is similar to two armies in battle the one with the best strategy will win regardless of its courage if one army has no strategy it will lose in tai chi it is the same you must have a plan also the one with more e will win When my opponent uses force, I know that force, but he cannot know my mind because it is so changing. It may be empty or full, and as soon as one thought goes, the second takes its place. And when the second goes, the third has already begun. Change has no limits. Those who use force will be limited by force and cannot change themselves easily. If you use your E, move flexibly, go in any direction and just charge like lightning, your opponent will fall and not know what happened. That's why mind is better than force. That is why E is better than Lee. So there you go. Yeah, well, it's the idea that you're if you're using your intent, you're not telegraphing in a, in the same way. And if the other person is really sensitive, right? The idea is that if I don't ever really have a plan in my head and yet I'm I have a plan, but I'm not I don't have to think about it. I don't have to telegraph it, then the other person can't pick up on it, right? This is part of um, the Sun Tzu thing of laying plans, right? That the whole thing of the preparation, right? All the training you do is so that when the real thing happens, there's no thought involved. You're able to just do it. And if you use force, you'll be limited by force and you can't change. And I think that's another of the great teachings of Tai Chi. If you lunge and throw all your strength forward, it's hard to, if you miss, it's hard to recover. Whereas the internal approach is to never reach beyond your own boundaries and you keep part of you centered at all times. You can change more quickly and move from one thing to the next if you fail in the first one. Yeah, I mean, there's other benefits too, but that's clearly what he's saying here is you're able to, you know, when you're relaxed, you're able to change in all kinds of ways. If you're stiff, you're just, you've got one, maybe two directions that you can go. All right, let's move on back to the Tai Chi Classics, which uh, is discussing a lot of similar concepts, obviously. 
Um, but it's fun to see Chen Wei Ming just may, bring it all down into in very immediate language. It's like some student complaining that I can never win against this strong guy. You know, that's that's what happens in your Tai Chi class when how many times have I made that complaint to the teacher? Just like, this well, guy keeps pushing me. What am I supposed to do? I, mean, I can't figure it out. <laughs> somebody one time asked, uh, asked her, uh, you know, what do you do if the other person is, is, you know, uh, more skilled than you and, and stronger than you. <laughs> and, and you know what happens? You lose. <laughs> you lose. Sorry. I mean, that's the, that's the bummer. <laughs> You're yeah. fucked, right. So you either have to be more skilled or, you know, right. You got to have one of the other, least least. stronger, right? Like you can't, you can't, you know, you gotta go have something going for you. Right. All right. So back to the, uh, uh, song of 13 postures as explained by Bai Hua. So the next section reads like this, as for the study and exercise of the 13 postures, what is the criterion? E and Chi are the essence. The form is auxiliary. So this is the same exact thing basically right uh, isn't that what he just said basically yeah I mean, well, like the criterion right. is like what's the most important thing when yeah. you're dealing with the 13 postures e and chi right well the 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 the, the mode of uh operations right like it goes intent chi movement right like there's a, a hierarchy is that the movement is the lowest thing on your 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 totem Gen ball, right? right yeah <clears throat> that that you, you're using the body really as a container to build the other ones, right? So it's it, it's the first one you have to work on, but it's the le you know long term. Uh, it's the least important part uh, of what you're doing. Um, so it, you know again, this is that paradoxical thing of Tai Chi, right? That you're you're. Um, your first thing is to let go of everything inside your body so that you can then build your body back up in this you know, Tai Chi way. So he begins to explain it by saying that, you know, the, the body movement form is yin. The function, the application, the use is yang. So the body governs the function, but the function leads the body. Body and function are roots for each other in very tai chi sense this you know that, that physical movement of the form is one thing but the use of the actions feed into each other is the way i i'm interpreting what he's saying there yeah it's the chicken and egg right that that the you first use your body to develop your intent and your chi but then at a certain point your chi and your intent start to feed your body so but your body gets better at it and then the better your body gets at it the more chi and the better your intent gets and then the healthier your body you know so it's it just keeps yeah kind of cycling and, and they're, they, they're the roots for each other right that they, they they feed each other um, yeah they're they're mutually rooted is actually the the term that he uses there and so you know the, the, this is that the yang strengthens the yin the yin nourishes the yang right so you 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 again use the the energy inside your body right that's the yang stuff inside the yin stuff to make the yin stuff to make the body strong enough to then build more energy right and it's so it's electricity that you have to have a wire i.e. your body, that can handle yeah. the amount of energy that's going through it, right? So even though the, the the coating on the wire is the outside, it's the yin part. It's the it's the stillness. It's the, mm. you know, the, the whatever. And then it's the electricity shooting through the wire that's the yang thing, right? And, and that's the intent and the chi, right? The next thing he says is, so he continues his explanation. The bone is the yang and the flesh is the yin of the body. In the same way, the e, the mind, is the yin and the chi, uh, referring to the external space, uh, the energy of the swirling world around you, is yang. This is another concept of yin and yang relating to the inside and the outside. So here, so he starts by talking about form and function. Now he's moving to inside, outside. Right. Another, once again, another yin and yang contrast. Like he just keeps, 
He's getting, he's, that over he's and clicking over. you. He's clicking you one, you know, level on the microscope in now. So yeah, now, instead uh, of seeing it from the outside, now you're seeing that first okay. layer of the inside, which is no surprise, also composed of yin and yang, right? So, uh, like the bones uh, down in the center, the flesh wraps around it. The bone being the yang, the flesh being the yin. So again, you have the same thing. You've got the the inseparable, the, mutually right, created the. the, the the one that's running through the middle is the, uh, young and uh, the outside thing. That's, that's where like, the charge is going through, yeah, like you were it, saying. Is, is the and I don't think he that's goes, the central channel. He doesn't go to it, up. but the next one is you have the same thing with your bone marrow in your central channel. Sure. Right? So at, at, at every level, you've had this yin yang yeah. distinction yeah. Yeah. going down to microscopic or mm -hmm. cosmic. Yeah, and so he compares that to the e of the mind. And sort of energy is the is yin, and the chi is yang. That's chi with the capital Q, right? Uh -huh. It's it's the big chi, not the chi. Okay, that makes sense. Body, yeah, right? if you look at it that way, it's just yeah. the cosmos chi. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And your mind and essence and spirit is your little e. So, yeah, your little version of that inside your body. Yeah, interesting. It, it so it jumps from inner to outer and just flips back and forth, kind of. Well, I mean, it has to do with this thing of one of the aspects of Tai Chi is investigating all the different ways that you experience yin and yang, right? And so when you start getting into that, that starts bringing up all these opposites, right? uh weighted unweighted left and right top and bottom in and out you, know, you just can go down the list so you know at, at a certain level of your practice that becomes almost an obsession are you paying attention to the inside of your palm or the back of your palm and when are you doing which one and then you kind of get into doing that same thing but now you're doing it with like one little joint somewhere and then you start seeing if you can do it with like an energy gate you know and, and it's like it just goes to a ridiculous um level because it's everything has that so as far in as you can feel as far out as you can feel there's always going to be that that you know you can investigate yin and yang on that level so um <clears throat> yeah this is just kind of i think giving you some big examples of that that you can play with oh the next one he goes even further out like he, the yeah. scope grows even further so now he's addressing uh emptiness the void also needs to be dominated by the one and continuous internal connection wait so now he's talking about space but then he just also with yi and the string of pearls moving this is where the string of pearls doesn't stop inside your body i think is what oh, he's saying is that that coordination can go all the way out and all the way back in i mean Damn. Um, well i mean this is where i think this is his way of talking about energy bodies in the sense maybe or different layers of energetic existence however you want to put it right that um you know, Bruce does it through the eight bodies. He's essentially doing it sort of through the Jing Chi Shen Wu thing, right? That yeah. the that when you finally get like all the way through your flesh and your bones and down to your bone marrow and into the that infinite little center there, that's actually the thing that connects you to the outside, right? So this so is, at the furthest small, you reach the big. Right, because when a thing re reaches its extreme, it becomes its opposite, right? So I think what he's getting at is this idea that your 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 flesh and your bones is really the vehicle to get to your shen, your spirit, right? That you're going to go all the way in through all of this meat and bone and, and everything else, and you're going to arrive at this place that's going to then allow you to connect to all the stuff that's outside, you know, of your small space. <laughs> and that's how he ends here by saying, um, this relates to the law that small space must obey the large space. This right. sort of primordial natural principle that that the big functioning of the universe is mimicked by the small functionings of all the things within it. 
which has that's, kind of been the theme of this whole. That book. has been the theme for the last hundred pages. Yeah. This is page one hundred and two, so we've uh, <laughs> we've we've beaten that into the ground. But like, <laughs> it's such it's sort of like we were talking earlier, like Dao De Jing's. I've read it and I've heard the concepts in the martial arts world. Some of the concepts come up and I was religious studies. So I, I, I got into it for a while and I feel like I know a lot of the terms and thoughts and concepts, but to truly embody them and to live them and to feel them in your everyday life, like you've got to, it's just like martial arts. You have to be told the same stuff about a thousand times before it finally sinks in. And so he's, he does a pretty good job of like beating a dead horse to like, keep circling back to this yin and yang and large and small and, and E and chi and these dichotomies and, and mysterious, but, but interfused concepts that I don't know, like the bone in the flesh he's saying there, like one can't exist without the other. They mutually create each other. It's chicken and egg to the point of the most raw thing is also fully intertwined with the most divine thing. You can't well, separate them. And as a and our our sort of our scientific world is all about separating stuff, right? You chop out bits right, of DNA right. and plug them in elsewhere. Like you can do brilliant stuff, but it's missing that cohesive connection to the whole that, that all of us, I think, are trying to in the modern world are trying to like we're missing that piece. Well, that's I think really the when you when you start talking about like what does Tai Chi have to offer, right? It's like, yeah, it's a martial art, you know. I mean as far as martial arts go, it's as good as any other martial art. But the big benefit of doing Tai Chi is the um, health and you know, mental benefits and spiritual, if you want to use that word, benefits of doing a practice like Tai Chi. That it it can take you way beyond the flesh and bones, right? Like, it, it'll do the flesh and bones, but it'll also take you to these places where you can experience you know, the whole realm of what Taoism has to offer through those practices. It's a merging of a lot of different elements of Taoism that got, when they got put into this thing called Tai Chi, you know, it, it allowed you to kind of more bang for your buck, right? Because you can, you can do your health practice, your <clears throat> martial practice and your spiritual practice all at the same time, you know, it's like, could think of like a commercial from the 1930s of like yeah. are you tired of you know having to meditate and do martial arts <laughs> well tai chi is for you you know right and with that i think we've covered this one sounds good well done yeah see you for the next episode Hi, brother. hey folks thanks for listening hope you enjoyed the episode if you want to hear the extended version as well as a bonus episode uh, go over to Patreon. You can join up for $5 a month. We also have an Instagram uh, where we'll post images to go along with the episodes. And we have a Facebook group. All right. Uh, take care of yourselves. Thanks for listening and be well.